Hello friends, this video limit and derivative part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com, no more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 9. We'll see a theorem now. The theorem says that if f and g be two real functions with some domain such that fx is always less than gx. Example, we'll take one scenario here. Let this be fx, fx is less than gx. So that will be two function and the greater one is gx. So let's suppose this is gx and let's suppose this is fx, right? If you see this function such a way that any point of time the value of gx is greater than the value of fx, right? Now, we are saying that if limit of both this function, let's suppose take a point a, for example, this is a point a and this is a point a. So at this point, so at this point, if the limit exists for both these values, then in that case limit of this function gx will be less than limit of this function fx. Very simple actually. See if there are two functions for such that they are always fx is always less than gx that is gx is always bigger then at any point of time if the limit exists for both fx and gx then obviously at that point of time the limit will also have the same property that is limit of gx at at x equal to a will be greater than limit of fx at x equal to a. It's a very common sense uh, assumptions confirm this. So this is the theorem. It's a very common sense that if there are two functions fx and gx, so gx is always bigger than fx, and at any point of uh, in the in the graph at x is equal to a, the limit exists for both these values. Then at that point of time, the limit will also have the same property. So in this case, the limit of this value, let's suppose this value is uh, l1, this value is l2. So here also L1 is greater than L2, where L1 is nothing but the limit of gx at x equal to a and L2 is nothing but limit of fx at x equal to a. Before we start a uh, sandwich theorem, let me build a base for the sandwich theorem. Let's take there are three students. So let's suppose one guy is topper and one guy is mediocre. And the other guy is uh, flop. There are three people, right? Now they all watch exam paper videos. Obviously, the topper watch more videos, so he's topper. The mediocre watch less videos, so he's mediocre, and the proper hardly watch exam paper videos. So now let's let's assume that the assumption is the topper always watch more than mediocre and the mediocre always wash more than flop. That's the assumption. On a particular day, let's suppose on Monday, okay, topper washed for three hours, let's suppose for four hours. Let's suppose on Monday, the topper washed for four hours, the mediocre washed for two hours and proper washed for one by two hours. On Tuesday, the topper wash for 5 hours, mediocre for 3 hours and flopper for 1 hours. This can be a regular statistics. On Thursday, the topper wash for 3 hours, the flopper wash for 2 hours and the flopper for 1 hours. But let's suppose on a particular day, we tell that topper wash for 2 hours and the flopper wash for 2 hours and I want to find how many hours the mediocre washed. Can we find? Because we have the assumption that topper always wash greater than or equal to mediocre and the mediocre always wash greater than or equal to flop. So in this data if we have, we, the assumption is topper since he is topper, he watched more videos, more example education videos. So if we assume that we are saying that topper always watched more than mediocre, that means whatever the value of x. If you see this, let's suppose this value is x here, right? 2 is always greater than or equal to x because the topper is always greater than the mediocre. Also, we are saying the mediocre is always greater than the flopper. So here the flopper also was 2. So 2 is always great, also greater than or equal to x. So that means we can say x is nothing but 2 because we are saying that x is greater than or equal to 2 and x is less than or equal to 2. The only number that you can satisfy this condition is 2. So similar to this we will develop a sandwich theorem where we will have three function, function 1, function 2, function 3, this can be functions, where we will say that function 1 value is always greater than equal to function 2 value and function 2 value is always greater than equal to function 3 value. That is, topper watches always 
more number of hours or always watches more or equal number of hours than mediocre. Mediocre always watches more or equal number of hours than flop. And on a particular date, if topper and flopper watch equal number of videos, then in that case, we can say that mediocre also watched same number of hours. We can do a graphical representation also. So let's suppose this is topper, always watches more. This is, uh, let's suppose, flopper. So uh, this is mediocre actually. This is mediocre also watches less actually. Right? This is mediocre. And flopper, this is flopper. Flopper always watches less. But on a particular day, when I'm saying that the topper and the flopper are meeting, right? They are watching the same number of videos. So in that case, mediocre should also watch same number of videos because we are always saying that topper is always greater than or equal to mediocre, and mediocre is always greater than or equal to. Very common thing. And on this, we have a sandwich theorem. Please understand this concept very clearly. We have three kind of people: topper, and mediocre, and flopper. And the assumption is topper always watches more number of hours education videos more or equal than mediocre and the mediocre watches more or equal number of hours than flop. So we have this condition T is greater than or equal to M and M is greater than or equal to F. On a particular date if topper and flopper watches equal number of hours for example 2 hours so in that case the mediocre will also watch 2 number of hours because the condition here is topper is always watching more or equal than mediocre and mediocre is always watching more or equal than proper. So we have this condition. If we assume that he has watched x number of hours, the mediocre, then we saw that x is less than or equal to 2 and x is greater than or equal to 2. And the only value that can satisfy this condition is 2. So on the basis of this, we have this sandwich theorem. Sandwich theorem says that if there are three functions, fx, gx, and hx, so that hx, Alex, I'll draw this. This is, uh, let's suppose, uh, one function. This is one function, right? And this is one function. So this is hx. hx is always greater than or equal to gx. And gx is always greater than or equal to fx. So we have three functions fx, gx, and hx, right? They are always greater than or equal to. In, in, for a given point, for example, this point is a. So if for fx and hx, this value for fx and hx, this let's suppose this value is L for fx, and the same value that is, I'll say, h of a is L, and f of a is also L. That is, these two points meet at L. Then in that case, g of a will also be equal to L. Why? Because the condition is, that g of x is always greater than or equal to h of x and less than or equal to h of x. Greater than or equal to f of x and less than or equal to f of x. If these two points are equal, that means we can say that g of x is greater than or equal to L and less than or equal to L. So in this case, if you see the only condition that will satisfy here is that g of x would be equal to L. Similar to what we have done in the explanation where we have topper flopper, topper, mediocre and flopper, right? In a, on a given date, when I say that topper and flopper always who studies two hours, in that case, mediocre should also study two hours because if we assume that mediocre studies X number of hours and have this condition that mediocre always studies more than flopper, that is two, and always less than or equal to topper, that is two. The only condition that will satisfy this condition is X equal to two. Similar to this here we have, if we have three functions, fx, gx and hx where the condition is that fx is always less than or equal to gx and gx is always less than or equal to hx. In that case, if for a particular point a or for a particular number a, if limit of or the value of fx at x is equal to a or x tends to a is equal to the value of hx, this function at x is equal to a is equal, that means the, the value of this function, the gx at x is equal to a will also be equal. That means all these three points will coincide. This is what we call sandwich theorem. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, 
study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.